Hey there guys, how's it going? Welcome to some Star Wars Squadrons gameplay first impressions. My name's Ollie, and I'm a huge Star Wars fan, but I'm even more of a space combat simulation game person. Is that even a thing? I don't know. This is super niche. But anyway, I've reviewed the footage from EA Play. I've taken a look at it. I've thought about it. And this is what I think of Star Wars Squadrons. So for those of you that don't know, this is called Star Wars Squadron comes out October 2nd, I believe. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong. And it is cross-play between the PlayStation 4, the PC, and Xbox, which is pretty great. I don't know about next generation. I would imagine at some point it would come out on those consoles. But one thing that is really awesome is this is a 100% compatible game with virtual reality, which I am hyped for. It's gonna be great. So this is a game all about single player, multiplayer, space, flight combat between the Empire and the Republic. You know, pretty standard Star Wars stuff at this point. So the single player is gonna be played by both the Rebels and the Empire, and you're gonna be going between the two factions throughout the campaign to kind of see it from both sides, which I think is pretty cool. You're going to play the entire game inside the cockpit of your chosen ship. So you can see here, all the controls are on the screen. All the necessary HUD information is going to be on the screen, which is a really weird situation and something that I'm really excited to see if it works. Uh, I always typically play these flight sim games in third person. It's fun to see it in the cockpit view for sure. But from a gameplay perspective, I definitely prefer third person. So I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what they've done in a gameplay perspective to see if they've made that easier or make that work any better. There is also multiplayer. Now, I'm a little bit worried about the multiplayer, I have to be honest. There's uh, two modes only announced at the moment, and both modes only have 5v5 game modes. Star Wars, Star Wars. It's wars, I like. I don't see 5v5 as a war, it's more of a scrap. <laughs> but um, I'm really, really hoping there's AI bots involved. I know they've announced for the single player uh, fleet battles, which is like the multiplayer offline, if you like. You can play it with bots. So I'm really, really hopeful. And this might be make or break for me, that the multiplayer has like bots involved so I can really kind of just play the game and it feels like I'm in a huge battle and not just 5v5. For the record, an entire fleet ship is only defended by five ships is a terrible premise for a scene in Star Wars. Like, that would not make sense anywhere. The multiplayer, having said that though, does sound really player friendly. There's no microtransactions. There's customization, which you unlock through just playing the game. I know, weird, right? And it seems pretty realistic with a nice high skill ceiling, which is different to Battlefront 2, which I think in fairness is pretty simple and arcade-like in comparison. I'll talk about this in a little bit, but there seems to be some drifting and it seems pretty interesting. But from what I can see, the game seems very, very focused on teamwork of the five different players between four ships, four roles if you like. There's the more standard, you know, average Joe does everything kind of player who has a little bit of speed, a little bit of durability, and a little bit of firepower. There's more of a glass cannon, the bomber, who is tanky, a lot of firepower, but very slow. And then there's the speedy, annoying little infiltrator, uh, little aircraft, which basically allows you to kind of nip around and kind of chase people down and get to places pretty quick. And then you have more of a utilitarian role, which is, you know, support, supplies, uh, repairs, and be able to help out your teammates if they need it. So I said there's two modes. There's your average 5v5 dogfight and what you're seeing on screen, which is a 5v5 fleet defend and attack mode, which is a bit like Rush if you've played Battlef Battlefield, sorry. And basically it allows you to go from one stage to the next stage to the next stage. And it's a bit of a tug of war. I like this system. It turns every game into a bit of a story. You get more involved in the gameplay. But as I said, 5v5 it's a little bit worrying these are huge ships with huge <laughs> huge amounts of people on board and you can only muster five ships to defend it it just really doesn't seem right but but maybe it works i need obviously we need to play it but what do you think about it in the comment section let me know but yeah from what i can see the game looks super realistic has some really nice customization on the ships you got 
uh, paint jobs, you've got little <laughs> wobble heads. Uh, there's a lot there. And for a single player game, for a game to come out with Star Wars Flight single player, it's super exciting to me. I think that's going to be a great um, bit of fun. Even if it's a short campaign, I'm hyped for it. But the multiplayer, I'm worried about. And I really hope they reveal more information or announce that they're building up the multiplayer. Because if it's a good flight sim or space flight game, but it just needs more content, then yeah, give us more. So I mentioned before that the game seems like it has more of a high skill ceiling gameplay aspect to it. And the reason why I say that is if you play Battlefront 2 in the space flight area of the game, you'll notice it kind of feels like you're on rails. There's no space dynamics to it like you don't drift in space if you suddenly turned you wouldn't just turn with no like understeer there's like you do a lot of drifting in this trailer which you don't see in the battlefront games and for me that hugely amplifies the skill ceiling and makes this way more interesting if i can kind of drift my ship around an edge of a rock and then thrust my way past it to completely bamboozle my opponent that sounds awesome but if it's on rails like Battlefront 2 and it's 5v5, I keep talking about it, but it's a real sticking point for me, I'm going to be maybe a little bit disappointed. Now, I've heard rumors that this game's only going to be $40. I can't confirm that anywhere. I've just heard multiple outlets saying that number. Then maybe this makes sense that it's kind of a lighter uh, game that's a little less intensive. It's a little less AAA. Then maybe, you know, I have to set my expectations in check. But from what I've seen, the excitement of VR, the excitement of just a single player based all around space flight sounds to me really, really fun. So there's my first impressions. That's what I think. I look forward to hearing what you think down in the comment section. But there we go. That is my gameplay first impressions of Star Wars Squadrons, and I'm really excited for it. But before we go, I just want to show you some gameplay here of Battlefront 2 because I picked up this game again, I reinstalled it. I actually uninstalled it a few months ago because I was so mad about the previous Star Wars film, but that's a topic for another video. Maybe you can agree with me down in the comment section. We can all just give each other a hug and feel better about stuff. It looked cool, but I just, the film had so many plot holes, I just don't want to talk about it. Anyway, this Star Wars, like Battlefront 2, if you haven't played it, or maybe you played it when it first came out, has evolved and developed into such a well-rounded game now. I really, really genuinely enjoy playing it. Even if I'm playing against bots, this game is just so much fun to get that Star Wars nostalgia kick that I'm really, really addicted to. Like the music, the lights, the graphics are insane. I love actually turning off all the HUD, turning off everything you can see here, and just getting screenshots for wallpapers and stuff. It sounds kind of lame, <laughs> like game photography I don't think is a very glamorous thing, but it's something that I kind of enjoy and it's super, super good to do when you get something like the Frostbite engine in Star Wars. Like look at this, it's like a walking wallpaper, like, it looks so good! Obviously you can't play the game properly, but man that makes a good wallpaper. So good. Anyway, all I've got to say is Star Wars has had a really, really weird history when it comes to games. It's had an even stranger history when it comes to films and how good they are. So I am desperately hyped and also desperately skeptical of how good this game will be. Uh, the only saving grace of this that the most recent Star Wars game that came out was actually really, really good. I genuinely enjoyed that game, even though it was single player only. I think it was the right decision. And I hope EA kind of looked at the result of that game coming out single player only and actually having good reviews and being really well received by players that maybe they can put, invest into a good single player Star Wars game and just make cool stuff in that way and not just like rely on microtransactions quite so much. I understand, and this is slightly off topic, but I understand microtransactions are kind of just a thing now. Games are incredibly expensive to make. They're more and more expensive all the time, even more so with the new game engines and stuff. So like, I can understand the temptation to put microtransaction in games, but when publishers like EA come out and say, a new game's coming out, it's Star Wars, it's single player, it's multiplayer, and there's no microtransactions, I'm a little bit hyped, 
but I'm also a little bit skeptical. So we'll see what happens. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And um, you've been awesome. Take care. Bye-bye.